What's up everybody, it's Keith coming at you again. Today I'm going to uh, deal with uh, false teaching uh, in this video and that's the false teachings of Oneness Pentecostal. And they have many false teachings, uh, false theology that they uh, propagate, but I'm going to uh, come against that with the Word of God. But I'm going to start off by giving a stern warning that's by uh, re reading the stern warning that's given to us in the Bible about false teachers and false prophets. This is what the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 1. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed, removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that we preach, have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that we have preached, let him be accursed. Second Corinthians chapter 11, uh, starting at verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. And then he goes further down and says uh, in verse 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12, But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they may glory, they may found even as we. Verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Once again, Paul is warning us about false teachers and false doctrines being taught. Uh, and one is Pentecostal has many false teachers and many false doctrines. Uh, one of their false doctrines is they deny the doctrine of the Trinity. Although the tr word Trinity does not appear in the Bible, neither does the word Bible. The doctrine of the Trinity, however, is taught. But they deny the doctrine of the Trini Trinity. They deny justification by faith alone by stating that baptism is also required for salvation. Uh, they say Jesus is God the Father, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, the name of God is Jesus, baptism is necessary for salvation, deny pre-existence of the Word as the Son, teaches that He existed as the Father. Being born again means repentance, baptism, and speaking in tongues. Baptism must be administered by an ordained oneness minister to be valid. So, as you can see there, and there's, and there's a few others on there that I left off because of time constraints. I want to get this all in, in one video. But they denied the doctrine of the Trinity. And they say, well, the Trinity wasn't introduced until the Council of Nicaea at, uh, at 325 uh, A.D. And that's totally false. And I have uh, some early Trinitarian quotes way before the Council of Nicaea. And they, uh, some people, Jehovah Witnesses and one is Pentecostal, will point out uh, to Tertullian that he introduced this idea in Theophilus at the Council of Nicaea. Well, to Tertullian only lived between 160 and 215 A.D. So how is it possible that he introduced this concept at the Council of Nicaea, which was 325 A.D.? That's over 100 and uh, 115 years later. Tertullian said. We define that there are two, the Father and the Son, and three with the Holy Spirit. And this number is made by the pattern of salvation, which brings about unity in Trinity, inter interrelating the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are three, not in dignity, but in degree, not in substance, but in form, not in power, but in kind. They are of one substance and power because there is one God from whom these degrees, forms, and kinds devolve in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Obviously, the doctrine of the Trinity is being taught in the Bible and was accepted by the early uh, church fathers and elders. Now, if you would go with me, I'm going to go to the scriptures now. Uh, we're going to go to John 8 and 18. 
I am one that bear witness of myself and the father that sent me bear witness of me. He's making a distinction between himself and the father. How can he say I bear witness of myself and my father bear witness of me if he's one and the same? Now it's going to take a whole lot of imagination and uh, twisting to make that say something that is not saying. Let's go to uh, uh, John 14 and 26. And this false teaching is mean, uh, leading many people astray. Many people are falling into this false teaching. I think it's important that we as Christians uh, adhere to sound doctrine because the Bible warns us that in the latter times they will not adhere to sound doctrine. And what you believe in will determine your destiny forever. Who you believe in. Like I said before, uh, Paul said if they come to you, if they come to you preaching another gospel, another Jesus, let them be accursed. He said that for a reason. John 14, 26, and it reads, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever, whatsoever I have said it to you. Clearly, Jesus is talking about his Father, God the Father. And Jesus being God the Son. And then he makes another distinction talking about the Holy Spirit. Once again, the, the doctrine of the Trinity is taught even though the word Trinity, what we use to describe the Godhead or talk about our God. We all say that the Lord is one. We are monotheistic. We are not, uh, we are not those who re believe in many gods. So Jesus clearly makes a distinction between himself, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God who exists in three persons, one in essence, substance, and nature. One in essence, uh, God is eternal, immortal. That's what Jesus is. The Father and the Holy Spirit are all eternal and immortal. One in substance. They all have infinite wisdom, infinite understanding, infinite power, and one in nature. All being holy, infinitely holy. One God revealed not revealed but exists in three persons uh, let's go to Acts 9 and 4 Acts 9 and 4 is the verse where Jesus makes a statement from heaven now one is Pentecostal will say that Jesus had two natures he had a human nature and a divine nature they both uh distinct or uh, separate from one another so when he's praying he's praying to himself which is ridiculous and, and Acts 9 and 4 it reads uh, and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice saying to him Saul, Saul why, pers why persecutest thou me and then in verse 5 Paul replies to him and says who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now this is Jesus in heaven responding to Paul. Okay. Now let's go to Acts 13 and 2. And this is a, a, a verse that will make a distinction between Jesus Christ who is in heaven and the Holy Spirit. And 13 and 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work wherein to have called them. So how could it be that Jesus is God the Father, He is the Son, He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? When the Bible is saying at certain times, Jesus spoke. The Holy Spirit said. The Father said. Uh, it's easily dispelled. The one that's Pentecostal, they have another Jesus. They preaching another gospel, especially since they saying that you have to be baptized to be saved. It was that if that's the case, what happened to the thief on the cross when he said, "Lord, remember me in thy kingdom," and Jesus said, "This day will you be with me in paradise." How could he do that? And he was never baptized, you know. So we have to be clear on what sound Christian doctrine. Jehovah Witness, Mormons, uh, one is Pentecostal. The family, I was looking up this new group today, the new Christianity. You're not Christian. And if you believe in these doctrines, you need to examine yourself. Because if you believe in the false doctrines, you will be cast into a lake of fire. If you believe in the false Jesus, another Jesus, another gospel, you will be cursed. 
Your boy 722 Marine coming at you again. Jesus Christ for life. The true Jesus, baby. Holla.